what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to try to raise the bar for you. Give you a, a little bit higher level of, of knowledge and understanding of how you can do your job better. But at the same time, what I'm looking to do for you, I'm going to try to give you some mental shifts. So when you look at something today and you look at something tomorrow, you won't see it the same. What do you bring to the table that makes people excited to follow you? Have you ever asked yourself that? Because you've got the job, I've heard people say, because I am the CEO, because I'm the vice president of logistics, because I'm the HR person. That's not a reason people follow you. That's a reason that people listen to you. Is there a reason here that anybody can give me why people would listen to you, follow you, stand behind you? You got a bunch of cheaters in this room. What is this? Well, Joe said, yeah, trust. One of them is trust. The big one is people don't always, it's not always, they trust that you'll deliver what they need in their lives. Not what you're offering, but what they want. <clears throat> Good leadership does a few things within an organization. Now, I distinguish between leadership and management, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. Because leadership has the ability to direct an organization. I want all of you, I'm not going to talk to you as people who take care of safety. You are executives in your company that determine the direction long term of your organization. If you implement a policy, if you hire the right drivers, or if you are responsible for making sure your trucks move the way they should, you are making a difference in your entire organization every single day. You are a virtual CEO. You manage your funds, and you can actually destroy your organization in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. It's that critical that you look at yourself as that important to your organization. You do things such as create alliances. You're here to create partnerships, people to work with. You do things such as plan. You plan, strategize, and put tactical maneuvers in. You develop new products and services all the time. When you walk through the booths there, I don't deliver products and services. Yes, you do. You deliver them to your drivers. You deliver them to your organizations. You might mount a new mirror on the side. And it eliminates 20% of the accidents that you've had because it's a concave mirror. That's a new product for your organization. Does anybody know where leadership comes from? What do you believe in? What? Examples. Of, uh, of where leadership comes from? from? From examples. So you learn from examples. How about the history of it? What did you say? What you believe in. What you believe in. Where did the history of leadership come from? Where did it come from? I'm going to tell you a story. No one knows, huh? Surprisingly, leadership before 1870, most leadership and management that we find and we learn about was in the, came from the military. Before 1870, which we did the Transcontinental Railroad, we, we had 26,000 employees linking. It was like putting a man on the moon in the, uh, in the 1800s. Before 1870, I, couldn't, I can't find organizations that were over 600 employees besides the military. Leadership came, and management comes from the military. Actually, the term management is a very new term. When you hear the word, I need to speak to the manager, how do you feel, sir? Me? I know you're a vendor, but you can still answer this question. I don't take the call. You don't take the call. <laughs> how do you feel, Mike? My, Nile? Nile? How do you feel, Nile, when they say, I need to speak to the manager? I feel pretty good. Who do you call when your couch is not delivered on time? I love my wife. Oh, come on. <laughs> Who do you call when the food is delivered late or cold? Who do you call when there's a problem with your couch being delivered or your car not being serviced? How many times, Joe, has your wife said to you, will you call them? What's the first thing you ask for? You don't say, hey, can I put to the, the person who put the food together? You ask for the manager, don't you? Look back into history, and all of our management came from the military. And the one great thing about the military, which is so unique, they get hot in my hand, they start to melt. <laughs> What happens in the military if you don't do your job and you're in battle? You die. I don't have enough candy to throw at all of you, so here, for this group who answered. You die. Let's figure out
figure out where we want to be first. Leadership is figuring out that vision. Where do we want to be? And let's work backwards. And you'll find 10 times, if you want to have 45 trucks on the road within two years, sir, 45 trucks on the road within two years, with what you're doing today, would you get there? Now, if I told you you need to have 42 trucks on the road to be able to get a comp competition, could you work towards that? Could you, would you change your plan? In a heartbeat. We change our plan when we know where we're going. Figure out where you want to go first. So let me ask you, sir, where are you going? Tell everybody here where your company's going. We're going up. We're going up. Get me excited. It's just thinking that. What, what would excite you? How about you, sir? Carl. Oh, why me? What, tell me something exciting about your business that I would want to come work for you. We've got trucks all over the place. Okay. Nobody knows what they're going to do tomorrow. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> right. Hey, he's right. Yeah. You're lucky. You've got enough problems with UPS up here. Don't be pushing it. Ask yourself the question right now, why should anybody follow you in leadership if you don't have a direction of where you're going to go? You don't show up for a job. I hate the word vision because it's so overused. You don't develop a vision on a weekend retreat. You don't. David, you run this organization. How often do you think about the direction of this organization? About every minute. About every single minute. When you go to bed, do you have trouble sometimes sleeping because of the direction of the organization? Do you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning with an idea about where you're going to go? Right. You write it down. When you come up with a decision, does it tend to be something that's very impetuous, you just come up with it, or is it something you most likely had thought about for maybe six years and finally made the decision? Finally, yeah. crystallized. finally crystallized. 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 Visions don't come from sitting down thinking about them. It's thinking about them every day. Management is, is this in the future, and it goes like this. Everything that happens today was a result of management in the past in your company. What you build every day is what happens in tomorrow. That's what you do. If you're working on today's problems, you're not working in the future. If you're working on today's problems, you don't have time for the future. You can't build that retention recruitment system that's going to work for you, those systems in place. Wegmans, I use them as an example. Anybody ever buy sushi in the old sushi restaurant and sit there for 45 minutes? Now you buy it in a grocery store for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Whoever thought that grocery store would be competition to sushi? There's a company in uh, Europe coming to the United States called Yo Sushi. They've eliminated the sushi makers. It's a conveyor belt that goes to the facility. They're going to plan to open up 100 sushi bars in the United States. You walk in, sit down, food's coming in trays right in front of you. You take the tray out, the color tray determines the price. At the end of the time, you take your tray, hand it to the person, and you leave. The rice is made not by a sushi chef going like this. They have a machine that packs the rice into perfect cubes. That's cool. The Burj in Saudi Arabia, the only seven-star hotel in the world, 220 rooms, 1,000 employees, a one to five ratio. One to five ratio. We're talking about a company that has solved problems. They have a concierge desk on every floor. Da Vinci, they just did surgery in the United States on a person in France. That's the future.